Hello everybody, welcome to module 8 on percents. In this little video we will be covering how to convert a percent to decimal and vice versa and how to convert a percent to a fraction and vice versa. We'll also tackle those evil percent problems in a very easy fashion. I'm going to go away from the textbook for that because I have a much easier method to solving your percent problems. And then we're going to apply those percent problems to percent of increase or percent of decrease types of problems. And we're also going to have a little application of simple interest. Let's begin with our converting to understand what a percent is. A percent, we need to make sure that we understand what is a percent. Now we hear about this all the time when we have our grades, we got a certain percent or percentage on our test. But what exactly does that mean? Well, a percent is actually not a number that we're actually talking about. A percent is, is a way for you and I to understand some statistics. Let's say with the um, presidential race that's coming up that 44% of the people are saying that they're, they're still voting for Obama whatever you want to say. Well, the number actually wasn't 44 in their data. It was 0.44. But we don't understand what a decimal of a number would be. And so we convert it to a percent. Now, per in math land means divide. And cent is our prefix, meaning 100. So a percent really means take that number and divide it by 100, and you'll get the actual statistical data. So the percent isn't that actual number. It means take that number and divide it by 100. But since we don't understand those decimals, we understand 44 out of 100 better than we understand 0.44. So if I'm given a percent, like 59%, how do I convert that to a decimal? Well, we translate the percent symbol. Once again, the percent symbol means take this number and divide by 100. We know that when we divide by 100, that just moves our decimal point. So right now our decimal point is here. Dividing by 100, 100 has two zeros to it. So we move it two spots. Now we're dividing, so we have to make it smaller. To make the number smaller, you move two spots to the left and drop the percent sign. 59% really represents the number 0.59. You've got to do the exact same thing with our next example. Move the decimal point over two spots. But before that happens, I've got to finish. <laughs> A little smiley face. Okay. So the 23.2% still move it to translate the percent. Percent means divide, which means make this smaller. To make it smaller, we have to go to the left. And so that becomes 0.232. Don't drop any of your digits all of the digits are still there. So it would be like a baseball uh, player's batting average. Oh, he bats 232. It means he's getting on base 23.2% of the time. Which means that he fails a whole lot, but I bet he's still making a lot of money. All right. So what did we just do? To convert a percent to a decimal, we move the decimal point to the uh, two spots to the left, and then we drop the percent symbol. with that being said, what if we're doing it the other direction? What if we're starting with a decimal and we're saying, I don't really understand that number, I want to write it as a percent. Well, we have to do the opposite then. So here I have 0.32. To make that into a percent, we are essentially going to be multiplying by 100. So we can say, oh, to get the actual number you have to divide. Oh no, it's a little bit con confusing. But decimal to a percent, the percent number will always be larger than a decimal number. Percent number will always be larger. Percent is larger than the decimal. Okay, so if you're not sure which way to go, you got to remember the percent will look larger. So 0.32, we move it two spots to the right. 
and then to represent that this isn't the actual number, the actual number isn't 32, it was 0 0.32, to say that, oh, what would I have to do? We need to include the percent sign. If it's a percent and you don't have the percent symbol, those are two different numbers and it's not right. Huh? So here, once again, oh, wait, which way do I go? Well, go to the right. 6.41%. Only two spots because there are two zeros in 100, which is what the percent is coming from. One more, 1 1.78. Oh, which way do we go? Which way do we go? You always go to the right. And that's where your decimal point is. So this would be 178%. We don't oftentimes have percents that are over 100%. Because 0% means something didn't happen. 100% means it's happening all the time. So to have beyond that doesn't really exist. But sometimes we have an increase in population or, or something of that sort. And so your final result is more than 100% because it's more than what you started with. And so it is possible to have percents that are more than 100%. Uh -huh. So what did we just do there to convert our decimal or to change our decimal number over to a percent? We simply move the decimal point two spots to the right. And then you must include the percent symbol. So how are we going to translate or convert a percent into a fraction? So if I have something like 43%, how can I write that as a fraction that it's equivalent to? Well, once again, we need to translate the percent. What this means is I'm taking 43 divided by 100. How do we write divide by 100? Well, we're not always going to use a cute little spaceship symbol. We're going to use 43 and we're going to grow up and use the algebraic fashion of divide by 100. And then make sure that you read your directions. If it says do not simplify, you leave it as that. If it says simplify, you make sure that you see if you can reduce it or not. Oh, reducing. Hey, here's the really cool thing about reducing. Because the denominator is 100, 100 is made up of 10 times 10. and 10 is made up of 2 times 5. So the only way that I'm going to be able to reduce with the 100 is if my top number is divisible by 2 or divisible by 5. Now, we know that a number is divisible by 2 if it's an even number. We know that a number is divisible by 5 if it ends in 5 or 0. Well, 0 is also an even number. So the only way that this will reduce is if your last digit on top is even or a 5. Because it's a 3, we know that we can't reduce this. Mm. So if your number ends in 1, 3, 7, or 9, if the top number ends in one of those digits, you won't be able to reduce. If it's any of the other digits, you can reduce. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's try another one. 57 percent. 57 per cent is 100. Ends in a 7. Can't do anything else with that. Hey, these are kind of easy. Let's try another one. 23.4. So I'm taking um, 23.4 divided by 100. All right, wait a second, wait a second. A decimal within a fraction, those are two different entities. A decimal within a fraction, I call that the antichrist of math land. We can't have that. So we've got to get rid of that. How do we move decimal points? Well, I just want to move it over so I can multiply this by a 10. If I multiply this by 10, the decimal point would move over one. Now I can't just do something to the top, I have to do the same thing to the bottom. Ah. So now on top, that moves the decimal point over, so I have 234. And on the bottom, I have the 100 plus another 0 is 1,000. Now this one can reduce. 
I know that because the top number is a 4, which is even. The bottom number is even, so I know that 2 goes into both of those. Let's see, 2 goes into 2 once with no remainder. 2 goes into the 3 once with a remainder of 1. 2 goes into that 14 7 times. 2 goes into 10, 5, and then nothing. So I need my two placeholders. And now I can't reduce any further. So in order to convert from a percent to a fraction, put the percent number that you were given as your numerator and put it over 100. And then do any simplifying, whether it's getting rid of uh, whether it's reducing your fraction or getting rid of decimals by multiplying by 10 or 100 or 1,000 or whatever you need to. And then make sure that you check to see if you can reduce. To convert a fraction into a percent, there's a couple methods that we can do. Now, if, say I had the fraction 3 fourths and I wanted to write that as a percent. As we just discussed, percent that number on top over 100 would be the percent. So I can set up a proportion like we did in the last chapter. 3 fourths is equal to what over 100? Because a percent is always out of 100. That's why they find percents because Say you were counting apples and oranges, and you want to find out the percent that were bad. Well, if you only picked 50 apples, but you picked 5,000 oranges, you can't just look at the number of bad ones to compare them. So you change it over to a percent, so both numbers are out of, well, if I had 100 of each, how many would be bad? And so then you can compare accurately because they're out of the same number of items. That's why we use percents. So we're going to change 3 fourths into something over 100. Well, setting up a proportion, this is solving what we did the last time. We know that the product of this diagonal, 3 times 100, product means multiplication, has to be equal to the product going the other way. And now we have an equation we can solve. Multiplying the 3 and the 100, you get 300. I'll write that over here as I have a little more space. And then to get the x by itself, we have to divide by the 4. x is equal to 75. Now remember, we were converting this to a percent. So make sure that you add your percent symbol because 3 fourths is not the same thing as 75. The fraction 3 fourths is the same thing as 75 percent of a whole. So one way that you can convert a fraction to a percent is to set up a proportion. Set your fraction equal to the percent over 100 and then make sure that you label your problem. We have a second method that we can use, but we need to remember that it's a two-step problem if we're going to use it. What we can do is convert or change our fraction into a decimal by dividing. Now once it's converted into a decimal, then we change it into a percent by moving the decimal point. We thought that moving that decimal point was pretty easy, so we're just going to make the a uh, fraction into a decimal, then you need to remember to do the second step though. This is a two-step problem. Changing the fraction into a decimal does not make it into a percent. A percent has to be out of 100. So if we go back to that 3 fourths and we divide, 3 divided by 4 is 0.75. Once we're at the 0.75, then the second step is move it two spots to the right and don't forget your percent symbol. And that's how we convert a fraction into a percent. So we apply percent problems 
the idea of percents into nice little problems to try to figure out, okay, if I have part of a whole, what percent is that? What does that represent? Or if I have a certain percent and I know the total, how many items is that? They, it can be manipulated in many fashions. And I remember going through these percent problems when I was a, a, a kid. And sometimes you multiplied, sometimes you divided. You had to change your convert or move your percent always to a decimal. It, it got confusing. I got every single one wrong. So I'm going to teach you a different method than what the book does. And I'm pretty sure you're going to like this one better. Remember all those questions? What percent of this is that? This percent of what is that? What is this percent of that? Ooh, I got confused every time. So I had an instructor that taught me a box. And the box method makes it all much better. So I'm going to simplify it and write out a box. Whenever we have a percent problem, like those examples up above, what is this uh, percent of that, blah, 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 we can fill in the box and use the box to help us solve it. Now, in the box, the lower left-hand corner, I always put my 100. Above that, I put the percent. The percent has to go above that 100. Remember that divide by 100 stuff? And then if you notice in all of our questions, we have some sort of is and some sort of of. Every question seems to have some sort of has is someplace. And it also has of something or other. And so the is number is the one that's going to go on the top and the of goes on the bottom. It's alphabetical. Now let me show you how this is going to work. So my first example is going to say this. What is 32 percent of 78? Now this is what I do when I go through this. I'm going to go through and I'm going to translate it one step at a time. And I actually do this in a specific order because it's going to help me make sure that I see my numbers correctly. Okay. So the first thing I always do is I always look for either the word percent or I look for the percent symbol. And in front of the word percent or in front of that symbol is a number. That's going to be my percent and that always goes above the 100. So right up here I see, aha, uh -huh, here's my percent sign and there's my number 32. So that goes up here. Now the next thing I look for is of. Not the is, I look for of. Why? Because I know more about of. Of is a preposition. Ooh, English lesson time. Yeah, a preposition is a part of a sentence that helps explain more about the subject and the verb, the noun and the action that's going on in your sentence. And the preposition always begins a prepositional phrase, a whole little phrase of things that's going to give you more information. And part of your prepositional phrase is a noun, another object, and numbers are objects. So here is my word of, and right after that is a number. So here's my prepositional phrase of 78. The 78 goes with that of, so the 78 is my of number. So that goes in the lower right-hand box. Then the last thing I look for is is. Here's is, and I've already used the number that's after it, so I go before, and before it says what? What means, I don't know. It's our question word. We don't have an idea what that is. So that means that that is what I'm solving for. That's my unknown. So I replace it with a letter to represent that I don't know. Now, we, that's pretty easy to set up the box. Now, what do we do with that once we have it set up? Well, the box, what we do is we're going to find the diagonal that contains two numbers. Remember, a diagonal goes from an upper to a lower on the other side. So here are my two diagonals. This diagonal has two numbers. We're going to multiply those. So it's going to be 32 times 78. And then you divide by your third number. I didn't use the 100. That's the third number. 
and that's going to be equal to my unknown. This is actually the exact same procedure that we used to solve proportions. Multiply the two numbers in that diagonal and then divide by your third number. And now we get to do a little reducing or maybe we get out our handy dandies and we simplify that and we find out that x is equal to 24.96. So what is 32% of 78? 24.96. Now, they just asked what is the 32% of this number. So my answer would probably be the 24.96. Now if this was a word problem though, and they said what is 32% of 78 geese, I would not have 24.96 geese, because we don't have 0.96 of a geese, of a goose. So I would then say that my answer would be 25 geese. Especially since this is 0 0.96, I mean, that's 96 one-hundredths. We're four one-hundredths away from that next whole number. So this one, I might use the whole number. But if they don't give a label up here that this is number is supposed to mean something, don't start rounding because you think that's okay. We like exact numbers. Don't start cutting digits off. We like as many digits as possible. Like I said, unless the answer doesn't make sense, this is supposed to be part of a goose, you're not going to have that. So you need to make sure that you're answering the question. Let's try setting up another one to make sure that we have it down pat. What percent of 25 is 8? Once again, the first thing I look for is the percent, either the word percent or the symbol. I don't have the symbol anywhere, but here's the word percent. And I always look before that word. Oh, before that word is my what? Once again, that means I don't know. So in this case, we're trying to find the percent. So our unknown goes above the 100. Then we look for the of. Why is that? Well, here's is, and there's a number before and a number after. How do I know which number is going with is? That's why I don't go to is next. I go to of. I know that of begins a prepositional phrase. And I know that the prepositional phrase has to include a noun, which is a number. So that 25 is the of number, so that goes down here. And now I've already used that 25, which means that next to my is here is the only number it can be. So 8 is in the is box. Now that we have the box set up, find the diagonal, find the diagonal that has two numbers, multiply them, and divide by your third number that will equal your unknown. That's your equation. Then we get to do a little simplifying. 25 goes into there once, 25 goes into there four times. 8 times 4 is 32. Now wait a second, what did this 32 represent? Oh, I was finding a percent. You gotta put the percent symbol if it's a percent. Because remember, that's not really the number 32, it's the number 0 0.32. But since we don't understand that, we write it as a percent. So it's 32 out of every 100. So make sure that you double check what are you solving for. I've got one more here. 13 is 25% of what number? Once again, look for the percent sign first. Here it is. That goes up here, 25. We look for of next. Here's our preposition. Here's the prepositional phrase. In this case, what number? That means I don't know. In this case, we're solving for that one. And then here's my is with the number right before it. So that goes up there. Multiply the numbers in the diagonal. That would be 13 times 100. And then divide by your third number. Doing a little reducing, 13 times 4, x is equal to 52. So that's how you would use the box problem to solve your percent problems. Identify where they belong in the box, find the diagonal that contains two numbers, multiply them, and divide by your third number. It's the same solving that you do when you're solving a, a proportion from chapter 7.
One of the other applications to percent problems is finding a percent of increase or a percent of decrease. Something increased by a certain percentage, but we don't know the percentage and we're trying to find that. So in this case, it says the population of Ashwaubenon in 2000 was 17,634. The population in 2010 was 16,963. Find the percent of decrease. So the population was 17,000 and it dropped to 16,000. We need to find out how, by what percent did that drop by. The dates do not matter other than the fact that we're, we now know that the first amount was from the year 2000 and the second was from 2010. So we started in 2000, ended in the 2010. That's all we need to know about the dates. What's key here is the numbers. But the question here says, find the percent of decrease. So we want to translate the number of people that left into a percent. The problem is we don't know how many people left. We only know how many people are there in those two time periods. So the first thing that we need to do is find out how many people left. Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to subtract. So to find a percent of increase or a percent of decrease problem, most likely we're going to have to start out by subtracting. So you take how many you started with, which is your 17,634, and we subtract. Okay. So we know that 671 people left. So we would need to translate the 671 into a percent. So that means that the 671 is the is, because we want to find what percent of the population is the people that left. So the 671, let's make sure we do that in the correct color, is my is number. The question asks to find the percent, so we don't know that box. Now here's the question. What number goes in the of box? Is it the 17,000 number or the 16,000 number? What number goes in the of box? And this is the key part of solving percent of increase or percent of decrease problems. The of box is always the original amount before there was an increase or a decrease. So in this case, our original amount was the 17,000, and then we decreased. So of that 17,000, it's essentially asking what percent of 17,634 is the 671 that left. So we put in our 17,634 up here. And now we have our box set up that we can solve. Find the diagonal so that have two numbers and multiply them. So it's 671 times 100 and divide that by 17,634. Plugging that in, that would give us our answer of 3.8, and don't forget this is a percent, so add the percent sign. So the population of Ashwaubenon decreased by 3.8% between the years 2000 and 2010. Let's look at another one. The population of Green Bay in 2000 was 102,313. In 2010, it was 104,057. In this case, it increased. What is the percent of increase? I'm going to give you a moment to think about that one. Once again, in order to find the percent of increase, we need to find out how many people moved into the city. 
So the first thing you're going to do is subtract the two amounts to find out the amount of increase. That ends up being 1,744. That is what we are trying to translate into a percent. So we put that as our is number, 1744. Now the of number is not always the largest number. It's always the original amount before there was an increase or a decrease. So the original population that we started looking at was the 102,000. That is the number that goes in our of box. Remember the is is always the amount of increase or the amount of decrease and the of is always the original population before people moved in or left. And now that we have it set up like that, we can solve it. Find the diagonal that has two numbers and multiply them and divide that by your third number. Plug and chug that into your nice little handy dandy we end up with just 1.7. Don't forget this is a percent. So the population of Green Bay increased by 1.7 percent between the years 2000 and 2010. Another application with percents is talking about simple interest. Um, oftentimes you can invest some money into some sort of financial institution and because they are holding your money and essentially loaning it out to other people and then getting it back from those other people, you gain interest on that money. They kind of pay you for letting them use your money to help others. And that's called a simple interest problem. The formula is fairly simple. It's simp it is I is equal to PRT. Remember all those letters being mushed together, those are different letters for different things. All of them mushed together means multiplication. So your I is your simple interest, and it's equal to your P times your R times your T. The P stands for the principal, or how much money you put in, the invested amount. R is your interest rate. Now remember, your interest rate is going to be given to you as a des or as a percent, but that's not what we're using here in the formula. In the formula, you need to remember that your rate will be used as a decimal. So you have to convert the percent to the decimal by moving your decimal point two spots to the left before you can use that number. And t represents your time. And the other key thing there is to realize that it's your time in years. So if you have the money in there for less than a year, you're going to be using a fraction of some sort. T has to be measured in years to be used in this formula. The R is not a percent, it's the decimal equivalent. But once you have those set up, you just plug it in and multiply through. So let's say we have this problem. It says, what is the simple interest on $4,300 invested at an interest rate of 7% for three-fourths of a year? Now, what I like to do on a problem like this is identify all of my variables. I might go up in here and say, okay, what do all of my letters stand for? So I go in and I say, okay, what is the simple interest? It's asking for the interest. I don't know that. That's I. So that's my unknown. I don't know that one. P is the principal or how much was invested. Here it says 4,300 invested. That means that that is my principal, 4,300. R is my interest rate. So I go and look for a rate. Oh, it says interest rate of 7%. So it's 7%. But remember, I'm not going to use that. So right now, before I forget, while I'm still thinking about it, I want to convert that over to my decimal. The decimal point right now is at the end of the number here after the 7, so I need to move that two spots to the left 
So I'm going to get 0 0.07, and then I drop my percent symbol. Because it's not a percent anymore, I now divided that out. And now I need to find my time. My time is in years. And it says three-fourths of a year. That's the amount of years is three-fourths, so that is what I use, three-fourths. And now I can plug and chug into my formula. I, I don't know, so I'm going to leave it as I equals P is 4,300 times my R, which is 0 0.07, times my time, which is 3 fourths. And now we multiply. Right. Going straight across and multiplying that, we end up and when I did my multiplication, yes, I used my handy dandy and I used 0.75 for 3 fourths because I know that fraction and then I didn't have to deal with it. And since this is interest, it needs to be in the form of money. So the interest that I'm gaining, make sure that you label it, it's dollars. I end up with $225.75. So I put in 4300 to some financial institution, a bank of some sort, and I was getting some interest back on it because they were loaning my money out to others. And I gained an extra $225.75. That is how you use simple interest. Let's try one more that's not going to have as pretty of a number for years. What if they don't tell us fraction of a year? What if they tell us days? So here's another example. The glass nook borrows, so the same thing can happen for borrowing money ourselves, borrows $4,800 at 8.5% for 30 days. Find the amount of simple interest due. Once again, the first thing I would do is identify all of my letters and see what I know and what I don't know. I have an I, a P, an R, and a T. It starts off and read the question. Find the amount of simple interest. So once again, I don't know the simple interest. That is my unknown. Principal. That's how much we borrow or how much is invested. That's the 4800 So we put the 4800 Then we find our rate. Our rate has the cute little percent sign by it. So it's 8.5%. Now let's see, a half is the same thing as 8.5%, but that was just changing my fraction into a decimal. I did not get rid of the percent. Now to get rid of the percent, I moved my percent sign, or my decimal point, two spots to the left. So it's 0 0.08. 5 is the decimal that I will be using for this problem. And then we find days or years or time. In this case it was 30 days. See how important it is for labels? I cannot use the number 30 because it's 30 days. I need to know what fraction of a year that is. Now for simplification's sake we don't worry about the quarter of a day. We would say that 30 days is 30 out of a total of 365. So that fraction of a year, since 365 days is a whole year. So this is a fraction of a whole year. Now that we have all of that, we can plug into our equation. Once again, the, the equation is I is equal to PRT. So I go down here, I do not know I. My P is 4,800 times my R of 0 0.085. If you want to put the zero in front of that decimal point so that you don't lose that, you can. And then my T is this fraction of 30 over 365. And now I plugged it into my handy dandy. How did I do that? I took the 4,800 times 0 0.085 times 30 divided by 365 because that's all a fraction is, is division. And once I plug and chuggy that into my handy dandy, I find out that the interest 
on that 4800 for 30 days is $33.53. So the Glass Nook borrowed 4800 They ended up having to pay back the 4800 plus $33.53 of interest. So just the interest was $33.53, but the total amount that they owed ends up being $4,833.53. So that's how much they paid back. So make sure that if you come up with a simple interest question, that you answer the question that they give you. Are they asking just for the simple interest? Or was it money borrowed and we want to find out, okay, how much do they have to pay back? Because they have to pay back everything that they borrowed plus the interest. And that's an example of some simple interest formula that uses rates or your percents and shows how you can't use this number as a percent. You have to convert it to the decimal that that number is really representing. And that's all we have for Chapter 8.